April Walker from the Yoga Ranger Studio and today's yin practice is all about energy. So if you are feeling you woke up with not as much energy as you feel like you want to have for the day and you have a day ahead of you with a lot to conquer or you're feeling sort of a lag in your energy in the afternoon, this practice is perfect for giving you a little bit more of that energy. And how we're going to do that is we're going to focus on a couple of meridian lines. So if you're not familiar with meridians, these are energy centers that are sort of not something you can touch, but they run throughout your body and run through your organ systems. And the energy meridian that we're focusing on would be your kidneys. So in Chinese medicine, your kidneys and your bladder meridian are linked together in a yin-yang relationship. And opening up that kidney and balancing that kidney meridian line will help give you a little bit more of your energy and balance your energy out. So we're gonna start with a couple of props you might need if you have a block, you can go ahead and use one. It's not absolutely necessary, but it'd be great. And a blanket or towel. So just something to use underneath your knees for some of these poses. We're gonna start in sort of a different version of a child's pose. So we're gonna do a sort of a half child's pose. So we're gonna take our left foot, tuck it underneath us, take that right foot out to the side, start with the toes up just for a breath or two just for a little back of the leg stretch. And then we're gonna roll that foot over and come down onto your forearms. Now, if your forearms is not accessible, you can always come up on the fingertips. If this is a lot for your knee, you can always take that knee bent in or out for your preference. Begin to take some nice deep breaths and settle into your practice. we look to hold these poses quite a long time, anywhere from two to five minutes generally. So what you want to do is not find your ultimate pose. You want to find about 65% of your ultimate pose. So if you've gone a little bit too far and you feel like there's a lot of pressure, begin to sort of back out, soften up a little bit. Don't worry, you'll feel this later. And commit to deepening your breath connecting to your breath and settling into your practice. So the kidney meridian line runs in the inside seam of your leg up into your kidneys. And your bladder meridian line runs up the back side of your body internally. So we'll be looking at poses that help Activate and balance these two meridian lines. In yin, we seek to find some feeling of stretching or lengthening or mobilizing the tissue. If you feel any sharp shooting pains or pain that causes you breathlessness, you wanna back out of that pose, come up a little higher, soften out of it. It's never our goal to have pain. Gently start to press through your palms and bring yourself to walk up. And we're gonna to turn to the left, taking that left leg into pigeon. So we're gonna stay upright for a couple of breaths here. Let 
Let your shoulders soften. Let your gaze soften. And then start to lower yourself down to whatever version of pigeon you like. So you could be your forearms, your forehead, your arms out in front of you. And here, allow your belly to drop down a little bit lower, your back to lengthen out. A big stretch on the inside and outside of the leg. Breathe through any tension in the muscles, releasing those muscles so we can get deeper into that connective tissue. In yin, our entire intent is to focus on the connective tissue and that cold tissue, fascia, joints, bone, in order to mobilize and strengthen those areas. Gently start to press back up. You take your hands underneath your shoulders, shift those legs back so knees are underneath the hips and come into cat-cow here. So just about five cat-cows. Just releasing out of the pose slowly and respectfully. and then coming to do the second side. So tucking that right heel underneath your hip, left leg goes out to the side, toes start up, and you wanna have your leg lined up with your hip so it's not too far in front or too far back. Just a breath or two here. And then go ahead and drop those toes down, fold yourself forward for whatever place you can find yourself here. Lengthening your inhale and exhale, extending your exhale out just a little bit longer than your inhale.
start to press yourself back up. You're gonna swivel over to the right side, taking that right knee out to the side, right heel underneath you for pigeon. I'm gonna stay once again up high to begin with. Letting the hips sink. Here again, beginning to lower yourself down to wherever you feel comfortable. And start to rock your hands back up, palms underneath the shoulders, and shift back once again. Cat cow here. And if you tend to have kind of tender knees for this pose in the next one, you can fold your blanket up or towel a little bit firmer. Take your knees on top of that. Take your block off to the side. You're gonna keep your hips over your knees, walk your hands out, and come into Anahatasana, or heart opening pose. So if your forehead doesn't reach the ground, you can always make use of that block here.
Start to curve your back up, walk your hands back to center. Flip your toes, lift your hips, come back to downward facing dog. So you can walk your dog out here. Come down for a moment, shift back into child's pose, let the hands rest behind you. And then start to come back up. You can take that blanket off to the side or leave it where it is. We're gonna do a toe flip. So you're gonna take your hands, reach back, flip your toes so at least all of, as many as you can get to flip over. My pinky toe is kind of short, so it doesn't go there. And you can either keep your hands down on the floor if this is too much, or you can start to lean back where you sit back on the toes. We're not gonna be here as long because I know how this pose feels for everybody. But what this does is this activates all the acupressure points on the tops and bottoms of your feet. It's really good for stretching the bottom ligaments of your foot. And it also activates all the meridians in the lower part of the body, which includes your kidney and bladder meridians. Start to lean forward, take that weight off of your toes. You can gently tap the tops of the feet onto the floor. Coming back to that blanket down the middle if your knees are tender, and even if they aren't, this is a really comfortable position for you. We're gonna take flying dragons. So go ahead and take that right foot out in front of you, fingertips down, lift that back knee, pull that knee to you so you take the top of the kneecap on there you can keep the toes flipped or not you're going to take both hands to the inside of your right foot and roll onto the outside edge of that right foot and remember to keep that idea of not going to your full pose just two-thirds of it If you are someone who feels very comfortable bringing your elbows or forearms down to the floor, you can go ahead and do that, or you can make use of the block to prop yourself up so you're a little closer to the ground. Come back to exhaling a little bit longer than your inhale, maybe extending it out. Sensing the pause at the bottom of the exhale, the top of the inhale. And savoring that pause, the breath. Start to walk that left hand a little bit more toward the middle. And you're gonna turn and grab hold of that right knee with your right hand and kind of hang on to the knee and then twist to the right. So your torso twists, not your legs.
start to unwind. Hands on either side of that right foot, bring the right foot flat. You're gonna shift back to either downward facing dog or child's pose, whatever feels best for you. Gently coming back up, you're gonna switch which leg. So go ahead and take that left leg out in front of you. Fingertips down, lift that back knee, drop it down, pull it to you. You can keep your toes flipped or not. Both hands to the inside of that left leg. Roll that left foot out onto the left side. Come down to wherever you feel comfortable. And know that left and right sides are very different. So you may find that this side will not go where the other one went, or maybe it will go further. And that's okay. Have patience with each side as it is. Sense your breath, sense your body, and pay attention to all the feelings that go through each part of your body, noticing where you feel this and maybe where you don't as well. And then begin to walk that right hand down to the center, turn toward the left, take that left hand, grab hold of the knee and secure it, and then twist your torso to the left. so slowly hands on either side of that foot start to shift yourself back taking downward facing dog or child's pose whichever feels best for you right now Pressing all the way back up. We're gonna take this blanket and we're gonna roll it up for our next pose. So towel or beach towel, blanket, go ahead and roll it up. You're gonna take it about a third of the way down. And go ahead and take yourself down on top of it. So knees bent to start with, arms out to the side. You can bend the elbows or not. 
you want to just roll yourself so the shoulder blades are just hovering above the ground. And here you're going to walk your feet in a little bit closer. Drop those knees out to the side, bottoms of the feet together. Taking some deep breaths into the heart, using your three-part breath first into the belly, center of the chest, and collarbones. Exhaling collarbones, chest, belly. Go ahead and start to shift one leg at a time out to the side and straight out ahead of you. Slowly bringing those feet flat, knees bent. You're going to press your feet, lift up your hips and take that blanket or towel off to the side. So pressing through your feet, shift your hips a little bit over to the right. You're going to cross that right leg over the left. Drop those knees over to the left. Turn and look over your right shoulder for twisted roots. Gently turn your head back to center, engage your core. 
Bring your knees back through the middle, unwind. Take your feet wide, drop those knees together for a breath or two. And then switching sides, shift those hips over to the left. Cross that left leg over right. Left arm goes out to the left, drop those knees to the right. Turn and look over your left shoulder. Start to bring your head back to center. Engage your core, bring those knees back through the middle. Shift your hips straight down. Drop those knees toward one another, hands to your belly. Take a few breaths here. You can go ahead and straighten out one leg at a time for Shavasana, arms out to the side, palms up. Rock your shoulder blades underneath. Begin to deepen your breath, allow it to lengthen out. If you have more time to spend in Shavasana, please feel free to take it. But if this is the limited amount of time you have, gently begin to deepen your breath, filling your belly, chest, collarbones up, and exhaling it out with a sigh. Wiggle your fingers and your toes, and very slowly start to bend your knees. Bring your feet flat to the floor. Maybe rock your knees a little bit side to side. And then coming back through center on an inhale, take your arms up overhead and stretch through your fingertips, lengthening your spine and exhale, roll over to your right side, taking a couple of breaths here. Whenever you're ready, pressing yourself up to whatever seated position you like best. 
keeping your eyes closed or open, palms facing up or down onto your knees. On your next exhale, drop those fingertips down to the ground. Inhale, sweep the hands all the way up. Open your eyes, look up at your palms. Exhale, hands to heart. Peace and namaste. I hope you enjoyed this practice. If you did, please like and comment down below. And please also remember to subscribe. I hope to see you again soon and I appreciate your practicing with me today. May you have a wonderful, energized, filled day. Thank you.